Okay, so let me first share what we did uh, 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 in Ruggers, which is the hunger chain simulation. We call it the supply chain hunger game uh, to, uh, to, to teach new spender models, uh, uh, shortage gaming, and, and things like that. So uh, I find that online teaching is, uh, is really challenging. It's very different from face-to-face from, uh, -face teaching because there are, there are just so many distractions up there and students can easily go on uh, uh, YouTube, could go on any other places. And so how to engage them, how to retain their attention is the biggest challenge. Uh, so we find that uh, if, if you put them into action and uh, if, if, they, if they have to learn by doing, and that's one of the best way uh, probably to, to, to retain their, their attentions. So, so what we want to do is we want, to, we want our students to have fun and learn not in the same time. <laughs> so let me give a short instruction of the hunger, chain, of the hunger, uh, hunger game and then uh, and the learning outcomes and impact. Finally, if we have time, we'll play maybe a few rounds just so you see how it works. Okay, so the hunger chain simulation is, uh, is used to simulate news vendor models and shortage gaming, like uh, Professor Esso has just said, right? So how to, how to teach news vendor model actually is a, is a big challenge because, because we used to just show people the, um, the probability distributions, the critical ratios, uh, which are not very intuitive. And so it, these are the hard topics to teach by slides, but, but actually they are easily played out. So here's the scenario, right? Mummy bird only has one worm. Who to give it to? Right now, uh, so in the game, the, the instructor will play as the uh, supplier, and the student teams will, will be playing as the retailers, and so stu uh, student team will place orders to the to the to the instructor. And the instructor will will essentially allocate or rationing the uh, supplies among the retailers, among the students. And what could happen during shortage? Now, everybody has observed uh, what happened in, in, in the pandemic, right? There's a significant shortage of, of uh, toilet papers, of, uh, of, of masks, and things like that. So what people typically do is uh, panic orders and hoarding, and, and that could lead to supply chain meltdown, right? The question is how to ensure efficient and fair allocation of resources, right? So... And one of the examples in real life, uh, in addition to the, uh, to the pandemic, is actually hot vehicle models. Uh, so if, uh, if uh, vehicle models is hot in a season, likely it's going to be short because the, the manufacturer's capacity is limited. And so the dealers uh, will be begging for the hot models. And sometimes they will, they will change their numbers, they will, they will do all, all kinds of crazy things in order to get a better rationing. <clears throat> Right now, this is what happened actually in COVID nineteen. Uh, New York's COVID nineteen fatality numbers may be inflated. So, if you look at the statistics, they pretty much count everybody uh, actually uh, you know pass away during that period as as uh, uh, as part of the COVID nineteen casualties. And uh, in terms of hoarding, uh, so President Trump noticed that Cuomo state have thousands of unused ventilators. And but Como is still asking for more, and he said yes, they are in the stockpiles because that's where they are supposed to be, because we don't need them yet, you know things like that. And still he is asking for a lot more. So but um, on uh, April six, Como said, well, okay, we have enough in reserve. <clears throat> so it's happening all the time. And so how do we teach such important supply chain concepts, right? And how do we teach uh, uh, news vendor models? And, uh, and what, what we do is actually we, we do not tell people news vendor model up front. We just let them play the game to experience the uncertainties. And then they will be after you. The students will be after you for the solutions. So, so we use the game to teach news vendor model, shortage gaming, such as panic orders and hoarding. And this is going to happen automatically among students. And we, uh, we net, we, we, um, so students can learn supply chain competition and also the prisoner's dilemma, and they are going to experience the older inflations by themselves. So you don't have to lecture about the prisoner's dilemma anymore. And finally, how to do rationing for efficiency and failures. Okay, uh, we, we actually use this game in many different classes in operations management, supply chain management, 
uh, sometimes in distribution logistics, we use for undergraduates and graduates as well. Okay, now um, the game trajectory. Now, if you look at a game, <clears throat> uh, the demand is is pretty stable, but slightly above the uh, uh, slightly above the the uh, the supply, the total supply, and you can see that this is the actual game results. The total orders were shoot through the roof, right? Uh, this is what is this? This is panic orders. Now, if you plot out all the uh, uh, lost sales as well as as all the supply surplus inventories, that is inventory left over, hands been sold, you find that both of them are, could be very large and positive. So, which means which means there's a hoarding, right? Okay. Uh, so let me just get down to the game. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. So. This this the real so what you experience in a game can also happen in real life, right? For example, the uh, Selectron case in year two thousand, right? The telecommunication market was growing fast, and uh, uh, the country manufacturer Selectron has short supply, because everybody uh, make a big forecast. So if you add up the forecast from all the OEMs, right, that exceeded the lowest forecast. So, so selection worried, but tech giants are sure they are going to pay. But four months later, the market crashed, and uh, and so there's no there's very little demand, and uh, and selection sits on four point seven billion dollar inventory, and that's the classical example of order inflation and leads to a supply chain uh, breakdown, and in a meeting to resolve inventory, everybody says the inventory is yours. So you can kind of relating what happened in the game with with what happened in real life. Okay, now let's see the game is set up in the following way, right? As I said, the instructor will play, the suppliers and the students will play the uh, uh, the retainers. The question is how to allocate limited supplies effectively. And so you have multiple retainers uh, competing for limited supply. Right, and this is the suggested screenplay. Um, so I will first play the news vendor game by setting uh, enough supplies, and students can experience right the the uncertainty and uh, will will be able to uh, understand uh, you know demand uncertainty and how to how to make decisions right under in, uh, under uncertain environment, and then you will teach the news vendor model. So that's the time they learn. They're gonna make they're gonna make a lot of mistakes in the, in, in playing the game. And then you tell them the new model how to uh how to how to optimally order, right? You tell them something like uh, if they order one quantity regardless of the demand, they will always be optimal, right? So they will be really impressed. Uh and then uh after they learn the new model, model, then you play the shortage game. And you so they can experience you can experience the drama. So all right, let me just show you. This is the game interface. Uh, so we can, I can share the teaching materials uh, and so on. So we can play a few rounds. Are you guys ready? So anybody like to ever, ever take the first 10 emails? Um, we can experience the game. Okay, if you like to join the game, just send me your email. I will use the first 10 emails with the game. So this is how the game looks like. Anybody interested in joining us? If you are, please type your email here. Oh my goodness, we already have a lot of emails here. Okay, great. So let's say uh, we have set here the number of groups. Let's say ten. You can set whatever. Uh, you can say one hundred groups. It's up to you, but that's going to be uh, really slow. So let's play maybe just six rounds. So we'll not be able to finish all of them. And then you can just type the students' emails over here. Okay. All right. Let me just. The first email is. Let me just copy paste the emails here. Right, and then you uh, separate the emails by semicolon. Okay, here's another email. So the game is very simple. 
right? The instructor has has the four control. And uh, okay. Yeah. Hey. I'm not able to see the screen. I think some other people might not be oh, able to see right. what you're. I'm not sharing that. That's because okay. okay. Thank you for reminding me. Um, okay. Let me stop sharing on the slides, but sharing on the, uh, now can you see? Yes. Okay, here's the game. I'm sorry, so, so okay. I have to tell the program which, which program to share. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Uh, so you see, I see the number of groups. You can see the number of student teams right up here in the top box. And in the second box, you can you can set how many rounds or periods you want to play. And then in the box under it, you can type in just all the student team's emails. OK. Uh, OK. Let me just type in the first 10 emails over here. Right. And you separate them, separate the emails by semicolon. So the program will, will, will know this is a different team. How many do I have now? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I see 10, right? Okay, well, wow, that's a lot of teams. Uh, and five, six. Okay, seven. Here's some someone from India. Let's see, maybe, let's see how it works. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three more, seven, eight, and nine, nine is from China, nine and ten. All right, great. All right, so you input everybody's email here. So everybody with uh, every email represents one team. And then you need to set the demand distribution. Uh, it could be, uh, you have three choices to make. Either continuous, continuous uniform or continuous normal or discrete uniform. It's completely up to you. But if you notice that the, uh, all the average demand is the same, it's the 15. Okay, then you can select either you're going to use this, uh, yeah, are, going, are you going to use uh, synchronized demand or asynchronized demand? Okay, synchronized demand meaning uh, demand is random, but all but everybody say the exact same realizations. Okay, that's synchronized demand, right? But asynchronized is, uh, is demand still follow the same distribution, but they might be different. So different uh, uh, retailers will see different realizations. Right, and then here are the typical parameters you can set for, uh, this is the capacity, so supplier's capacity. Uh, so if you set this number to be uh, to be more than 25, then, then it's essentially a new vendor game because the maximum demand per retailer is at most 25, right? But if you say this below 15, let's say 12, right? Then on average, you will be out of, you will be short of supply, right? Remember the average demand is 15. Right now, the two parameters down there is the selling price and the cost uh, for, the, for the retainers. That's that come from the vendor model. Okay, now let's start a game. You should receive. Now check your email. You should receive an email with the login information. And also the website, the web address. <clears throat> so did you receive an email? Okay, now while you are checking an email, um, let, me, let me just explain a bit more. So you can start a game. You can you can restart a game if some you know somebody made a mistake, or if you type something wrong, you can reset the game, uh, change all the parameters. You can save the game and also end the game. So it's a good practice to save the game all the time, just in case the server, uh, um, just in case you don't lose data. Okay, now here is the. Uh, you will see the uh, financial performance, essentially the uh, profits of all the teams. We have 10 teams here. Uh, so you can track if they ordered or not. And uh, let me see. Okay, here's the complete game information. 
So if you receive the login and if you uh, enter the, the, the system, you will see something like this. So everybody in the demo periods will see exactly the same thing, right? Their demand, everybody has the same demand, order, that's the demo period's order, which is 12. A ration, which is 12, because 12 come from uh, this number you set here, the supply per player. And the sales, no sales, surplus inventory, profits, and also cumulative profits. So the team with uh, the highest cumulated profits will ring at the end. Now, of course, um, uh, 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 instructors can see this, but but each individual teams can only see their own numbers. They won't be able to see the numbers of the other teams, right? Okay. Now, if we go to the next round, then uh, well, then the instructor should wait for every uh, uh, player to enter their numbers. Okay. Uh, let me come back to the teams. So, did you receive the login information? Oh, one team already submitted numbers. See, you see that? When they submit their numbers, their orders, then the, the uh, see this word become true, right? So, okay, now let me just show you how, what number they submitted. They log in and submit their numbers. Now uh, in the classroom, please don't do this, but here it's just for, for, for show, let me show you what they did. So if you go to the complete giving information, you can see uh, the first team submitted 10, the second team submitted submit 14. So this is real-time communication, right? So you're communicating in real time with here, another person, right? From India, right? Okay, you can see people are submitting their orders, okay? Uh, real-time communication. Okay, let's wait for a few uh, other people to submit their orders, you see? Uh, uh, when, after everybody submit the orders, you can you can do calculation and move on to the next to the next period. All right. So everybody just it's just the game. Let's submit the orders. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So okay. While they're submitting the orders, I want to show you something more. So you can actually show the competitive information, right? Okay, here is, so in each period, you will be able to see the, uh, the total demand or this aggregated information. The total demand of the period, right? The total order, that is the submission of all the orders placed by everybody and the total supplies and the total lost sales and the total surplus inventory, right? And you can also visualize, right? The data, right? Over different time periods, right? By these graphs automatically. Now we don't have enough, enough data yet, but later I'm, I'm going to show you a, a, a previous game that we played in the past. Okay, looks like the other people are still thinking about this. All right, let's see. Uh, okay. All right, we have three more teams to go. Okay, now let me just go back a little bit to the uh, to the financial table. You see, uh, if uh, if the, if the word is true, right next to this team's email, that means this team has already submitted their order. Now we have three teams not yet submit their orders. Uh, maybe they are still thinking, or maybe they didn't get an email. I don't know. Okay, so maybe I'll come back to this a little bit. So let's go back to the uh, presentation. <clears throat> Okay, I need to change the sharing. Let me uh, share content and let me share presentation. Okay, let's switch back to the presentation. Okay, I will come back to the games a little bit later. <clears throat> okay, uh, sorry. Okay, let me just tell you a little bit of feedback before we get back to the game. Uh, we played the game in a lot of different classes uh, uh, from, with, with instructors from, from various schools. And most, so the, the game is engaging because uh, students are forced to take actions. They cannot, 
move away, and they really, they really learn by doing. So one student comment is that Hunger Game is very interactive, and bring critical thinking to the activities and so on and so forth. And also, he said、uh, it reflects the、uh, real world competition. Now, I would, I would emphasize on one thing: competition is not something very natural. When people make、uh, news vendor models or news vendor decisions, they typically do not consider other teams, right? How other teams make their decisions. But in a shortage game, they have to consider because if I, if you, if I order or not, and, and you won't get much, right? So they have to consider this kind of uh, uh, interaction. Or 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 action and reaction into among the teams, and so everybody is connected now. Okay, an instructor actually is one of my former、uh, PhD students.、Uh, he, he she taught this game. She said the game worked really well. My teaching evaluation is smashed to find and reach four point three eight. We have five scale, and she used to be like three point five or something. <laughs> okay.、Um, Now let me just go back to see if everybody enters.、Uh, we still have three people not yet entered. Okay, all right. Now so, and so the students is going to experience. Let me just maybe show you the the sample,、uh, one of the previous、uh, results we had with the game. All right. Let me just switch back to the to the web. All right, so we have th still have three teams yet make their decisions, but that's okay. Let me first save the game, and、uh, you can always reload the game later, over here. I see I have played the game a lot, so you have a previous game list over here, and this is the game where it just saved. So you can always reload, reload this game a little bit later. So now let me show you、uh, one of the game we played in the past. Let's see this one over here. So this is the game we played about two years ago with our MBA students.、Uh, I just want to show you how crazy they are. Okay, if I show you the here is the、uh, competitive information. Okay, so so、uh, if you look at here, the total supply is forty, which is consistent over time, and initially order is forty. But then it goes to, it goes to uh two million. I'm sorry, two hundred twenty five, two hundred twenty five thousand. Right. So so and so students. This is the shortage game, and the、uh, students will experience the、uh, order inflation, and panic orderings are holding by themselves. And so if you look at this, right, you you won't be able to see the total demand and supply anymore because they are too small. And the total orders is way above everybody else.、Uh, this is not the most crazy games、I、ever played. And if you look at the total lost sales, and the total surplus inventory, and both of them are very very high. What does that mean? That could only mean one thing, right? If you only have one retailer downstream, you will not have lost sales and surplus inventories to be positive in the same time. Only one of them will be positive. Now, if both of them are positive and very high, that means the inventory goes to completely goes to the wrong place, right? So a lot of people starve to death while others with significant amount of excessive inventories, and that's why that's that that happens because at the end of the day, when people make their order decisions, they are not using demand at all. They are just guessing what the others is going to order, and that's what happens. Right, that's a total supply chain meltdown. All right, let me just come back、uh, to wrap this up. Okay, let me share contents. Okay, now so I I first played the newsvendor game, right, and then I I teach newsvendor models. I, I still didn't really learn at this time, and then I play the shortage game again. So they they are going to experience something completely different. Right, which is the supply chain meltdown, which I just show you, right? But but at this point, please do not leave the class because because they feel they feel such pain, right? They under they they just realize there's such a big problem out there. You need to give them a, a solution before they leave the class. Okay, now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell 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 them the fair sharing, right? Which essentially 
is to allocate the supply, right? Not according to how much they order, but according to their demand. Okay, this is actually used in real life. Right, okay. Now the idea, uh, the fair sharing is actually, uh, uh, it's very effective, but not fair, okay? The, the proportional rule, which is uh, allocating uh, inventories according to orders is, is fair, right? Everybody could order any amount, but not efficient. But this fair sharing rule, which is allocating by demand, is efficient but not fair. Okay. Now it's efficient because it completely eliminates the game. Right. Also pr provides a clear incentive for the retainers to sell their products more. Right. They only they can only get more if they sell more. Right. Also assuming the uh, assured the, the units will be sent to the markets where they are needed the most. Now it is not fair because. Because it, it, it eliminates the retainer's forecast and business plans, and also it locks the locks in uh, in the market share. Because the big retainers will always get more, right? Or the small retainers will get less. So so it is actually not fair, but it's efficient. Okay, let's just finally come back to the game to to see if everybody plays their orders. Uh, okay. All right, let's just. All right, okay. Let's come back to the game. Let's just, let me just refresh. Okay. Well, look, everybody ordered. Great. So let's do a calculation. So you move to the next period, you do a calculation. Here we go. All right, so the winner is Wang from FDU for the first period. Of course, you're gonna play this multiple periods, right? To see the cumulative profits to determine the winners, but uh, uh, Wang from FDU is the best in this round. All right, thank you everybody. I will stop now. Anybody has a question?